Sigla is a cloud-native PNC insurance platform company focused on enabling risk carriers to digitalize, automate and become more efficient and agile. Today's speakers will share their view on how to grow in mature insurance markets and specifically on the potential in microinsurance, parametric insurers and embedded insurance. Please welcome to the stage, Iba. Hello and good morning and welcome to this presentation. I am really excited to be here. This is truly a rock star stage. Not only are we in a great company with excellent speakers, but there's a good eight meters from the edge of the stage to the first row of chairs, and the room is easily 50 meters long. And I think perhaps the DIA designed this room as an analogy for the insurance industry about the distance between the insurance companies and their customers, because I have absolutely no idea what's going on in the back end of the room. And, and we're going to play around with uh, a small water sensor. So if you want to have a better view of what's going on on the stage today, I encourage you all to come forward, uh, because you can, I presume you cannot see anything at the back end of the room. But uh, as the introduction said, we are Nigel Barnfield and myself, Nils Trzeski from IBA or IBA. And we have, since 2010, we have been developing and provisioning a leading cloud-native core insurance solution supporting the end-to-end -end insurance value chain. And today, in this presentation, we will show you a video that continues a long-established tradition of showing how to issue a policy on our platform. No, that's not at all what we're going to do. We're going to perform a live demonstration, and in that, we're going to pour some water on a water sensor and see if that can teach us something about how to achieve profitable growth in the insurance industry, especially with the focus on mature markets. So let's see uh, how that happens. So everybody is looking for growth. Everybody is looking for growth. In fact, in just in the presentation we just saw from Generali, in the upper left-hand corner on the slide, it says uh, how to become a lifetime partner driving growth. Everybody is looking for growth. I don't think there's a single person that went to to their work in the office every morning and said, today I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did yesterday. Today I'm going to maintain status quo. Everybody wants to develop themselves, their company, their market and so on. Everybody is looking for growth. And especially obviously people like you who has traveled to participate in industry events like this, you want to develop, you want to see what can be done to grow. And for some, for some time, we've been talking about disruption as a way of growing. And I can easily see why disruption of the insurance industry is very appealing to everybody. Because if you are the disruptor, if it's you who's disrupting the insurance industry, by nature, you will have access to a lot of growth. In fact, you can even scoop the market because you have found a brand new way of doing this. The problem is that that we don't really have a clear view of how that disruption is going to look. And in fact, if we had, if somebody figured it out, we'll probably be out there disrupting the insurance industry and not sitting in here, and most certainly we'll probably not be sharing with our, our colleagues in the industry how to disrupt the insu insurance industry. In fact, we'll probably be doing it ourselves. So, so nobody has actually figured it out, and, and that has led to the idea about innovation. So, under the idea is if you continue to innovate, ultimately you'll find a way to disrupt the insurance industry and that way you will achieve growth. Again, without actually knowing how that innovation or disruption is going to look. And growth has been awarded to some. There has been players out there who has been growing a lot. But there is a problem here. The company that we've been all talking about for some time, who claim that they found the key to disruption, is not really being appreciated by the investment market. In fact, they are currently trading at about just short of $20 per share, which is 50% down the IPO price and 70% down compared to their, their, their ultimate, uh, the, the maximum of their share price. So there's something that's not being appreciated in terms of growth by the investment market. 
And I think the tide is turning now. There's some new changes, there's new things we need to be aware of when it comes to growth. In fact, it has to be profitable growth. So today we'll be discussing some of the, the basic uh, opportunities for growth, and we'll be discussing how to achieve not only growth, but profitable growth. And for that, we'll be turning to uh, some business strategy, especially for blue ocean strategy. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, and, and the presentation today is going to be about pouring water on the water sensor and not to discuss business strategy. So I'm going to fast forward to the interesting part of this and, and establish that blue ocean strategy is about finding pockets of opportunities in otherwise unattractive markets. So as an mature insurance industry, Western Europe, the Netherlands, the Nordics where we're from and so on, they all see very high insurance penetration, very difficult to find growth without actually having to take the bread out of your competitor's mouth. But there might still be some pockets of opportunities where you can grow without actually having to compete against anybody else. You are making the competition irrelevant because you have found a way to carve out a piece of the market, especially for you. And uh, the Blue Ocean strategy was developed by professors at INSEAD in 2005. And one of the examples of how to do that they used was Cirque du Soleil. This is a Canadian uh, circus group that managed to enter an extremely unattractive market. So the circus industry, not that I'm a particular expert on that, is extremely unattractive. Their entry barriers are sky high. You need to have a lot of facilities. You need to have access to artists with a, a relatively short supply and so on. So it's very difficult to enter. But nevertheless, they managed to carve out uh, an opportunity for themselves and became extremely successful by simply changing the rules of the market. And in my view, Blue ocean strategy for insurance comes in the shape of microinsurance, embedded insurance, and parametric insurance. And today, we'll show you an example of uh, a, something that could actually be all of these, depending on how you uh, look at it. So what will happen now is that Nigel will take over, and he will uh, show you a demonstration by starting pouring some water on this water sensor. And then, uh, when that has happened, we will talk about how this can facilitate profitable growth and talk a bit about the dynamics of uh, what you need to be able to do, which critical capabilities you need to acquire in order to do this. So with that, um, yeah, and, and obviously uh, when doing that, we will focus not so much about innovation, but rather the fundamental disciplines that is the prerequisite of profitable growth, which is predominantly operational efficiency, the ability to do whatever you do, but do it better at a lower cost. It's about premium growth, the ability to add premium, grow premium, without at the same time adding additional cost to your operation. And it's about underwriting discipline, the ability to balance risk and premium in a better way to achieve a more profitable result. So with that, I will hand it over to Nigel for today's practical demonstration. Thank you, Niels. So uh, yeah, just to touch on what, what Niels mentioned earlier, the demonstration that we've provided, or we will provide for you today, is essentially we're going to focus on the operational efficiency element of, of growth. And to do this, we've prepared a scenario, and there are going to be three, uh, three actors, or three, three persons involved in our scenario. We can see that we have a, uh, a policy holder here. We're looking at the, uh, the front end of uh, IB Suite, and I have a customer called Eric, who, uh, if we look down, we can see that he has a smart home policy with us, and currently he doesn't have any claims on the uh, on the system. But his home insurance, uh, sorry, his uh, his home policy covers a number of uh, properties in Spain that he has, and one of them is in uh, an area called Sitges in Spain, which is a, a summer house that our our customer owns. So. He's going to be the first of the, the kind of actors in our scenario. And actually, because this is an embedded uh, example, the policyholder is actually going to have the least amount of work to do. The other person that will be involved is a maintenance company. So we can see that on the, uh, on the coverage on the policy here, we have a maintenance service. Uh, and the property is being looked after by a fictive company called Maintenance Barcelona for whom we have uh, an email which is open in, uh, in Outlook. And the third person in our scenario will be the claims handler who uses IB Suite 
to go in and do their work and to monitor the, the claims that have come in. So in our scenario, let's imagine that um, the policyholder is, is not at the summer house, but what happens is that a water tank bursts and will be resulting in water that is put onto the, the water sensor, which we've associated with the, with the policy. And you'll see that I'm going to simulate this here by pouring a small amount of water onto the, uh, the sensor. Um, I should mention, by the way, that these super cool canisters, uh, you can come by our booth after this, and not only can you see a chance to see how the configuration was set up to drive this process, but you can also win one of these cups. So we'll simulate now that we get a small amount of water. And then we can hear, hopefully, that the alarm has been triggered on the, the summer house property in, uh, in Spain. So what actually happens in principle now is, or sorry, in practice, is that this is talking to a very small Raspberry Pi that we've got here. And I'm going to take over the role of the plumber just shortly and uh, hand over to my colleague, who will hopefully reset the alarm for me. But in the meantime, uh, a number of processes will have been taken over in IB Suite. So we can start out initially by hopefully then opening the custo oh, sorry, the, um, the second of our actors, the, the maintenance company. And if we now open his email, he's sitting there as a plumber. And we can see that he's got a mail which was sent here at 1016, just right now saying that there's a water leak which has been detected in a property that he is maintaining for us. So IB Suite has then taken over some of this process, and it said, it's OK. You need to go fix this urgently. We've already created a claim for you with the, the claim number ending in 3183. And the next step is that the plumber can go and do his job, which Mirko is actually already uh, doing right now. <laughs> and then send us an invoice um, to, uh, to continue the, the process. At the same time, I'll just close that down. We've also sent an email to the policyholder. So you might notice there that the, uh, the policyholder has an email address which we're using in our internal uh, system here at IBA. But it's a real mail, so we can just log into Gmail here. And we can see that. Right now, 1016, we have a water, a water damage which has been detected in your property. But take it easy, because we've already sent the plumber to go and deal with the problem. And then as we uh, reset the alarm just there, then we can see that we've also sent a second mail a few moments later to say, OK, the plumber has been onto the, uh, onto the scene, has reset the alarm, and is going on with fixing the damage. I should mention, by the way, that obviously all of these templates for communications were also configured within IB Suite. So, so that's two of our kind of actors that are, that are happy in, uh, in IB Suite. We have the, the policyholder is happy because he has um, received a mail to say that everything's under control. The plumber has got some work. And finally, we take over the role of the, uh, the claims handler who was sitting in her home page. Um, and we can see now that an alert has popped up on the, uh, the home page to say that a water alarm has been triggered in this property. And uh, Google has very kindly shown me these apartments in details along with their review scores. And if I jump into the claim now, we can see that we have the, uh, the policy. And now we can see on Eric, we have a, a claim which has been created. We can get an overview of all of the communications. So we can see a collection of all of the three emails that were sent out, the mail to the plumber, the two emails to the customer. And the initial reserves have been set up uh, on the claim. So the entire process didn't need the policyholder to do anything. The claims handler has also had the, the claim initialized and, and set up, um, and the plumber can get on with the work. So that's an example of how we could use operational efficiency to, uh, to drive growth. So I'll hand back over now to uh, Niels, 
to uh, go back and, and give us a wrap up on, on what we've seen. Absolutely. So clearly, the, the keyword here is automation, but let's get back to that in a second. First of all, let's just discuss what kind of insurance we were just looking at here. So is this micro insurance? Well, it could be because it could be an individual coverage only covering the event of a water burst, of a water tank, or a flooding event, or something like that. Like that. So it could be a micro insurance example. Could it be embedded insurance? Absolutely, because the insurance could also come together with the water sensor. So it'd be not provided by an insurance company or something else, but together with the water sensor. So you install the water sensor, and that way you're also covered for this particular type of insurance. So it's also embedded insurance. Could it be parametric insurance? Well, it could also be parametric insurance. Parametric insurance is that you are entitled to a compensation if a certain event occurs within certain parameters. And this could essentially be a yes-no situation. Is the apartment flooded or not? And if it's flooded, regardless of the, the, the loss that you have suffered, you are entitled to a compensation, and that happens automatically. So certainly the, 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 the thing that is shared across all these types of insurance, and especially in this example we just showed right now, is the fact that we are automating everything. But also we are providing excellent customer service. The customer is being instantly notified that something has happened, that we have taken corrective actions to minimize the, the damage, the plumber has been notified to move out and, and correct uh, whatever has happened, and also reset the sensor in the same process. So everybody's keeping informed, everybody is serviced, and also, so that leads to uh, a higher customer satisfaction, still without anybody doing anything. And in this particular case, Nigel uh, concluded his presentation or the demonstration by turning to the view of the claim handler. But actually, we could just go ahead and close the claim because everything has been uh, settled. The potential compensation has been paid. The service supplier that went out to, to inspect the damage and perform corrective action has been paid and so on. The documentation is stored. And so all of that uh, has been handled and we can just go ahead and close the claim. So, so how does this lead to growth? And how does this especially lead to profitable growth? Well, embedded insurance, microinsurance, parametric insurance, all applies to the same principle when it comes to uh, pr profitability. So first of all, it's a small ticket thing. So maybe a euro, maybe two euros, Either that's something that it's a cover that is being added to a, a, poli a policy of a higher volume, so, but the, the individual coverage is only worth a couple of euros, so it's a very small ticket thing. So volume is key, and in that way, distribution is key. So if you want to do stuff like this, embedded insurance, microinsurance, parametric insurance, you need to be sure that you have your distribution network uh, under control. You need to be sure that you have access to the market, and by the way, that you're offering a product that is is in demand in the market, coming back to the blue ocean strategy. Secondly, uh, when running a high volume business, you need to have a high degree of automation. Efficiency is key. You cannot burden your existing operation with high volumes without being sure that you can manage it without adding additional costs. So certainly automation is key, efficiency is key. Uh, we just heard from the previous presentation that uh, they, uh, using robotics and even an advanced uh, form of robotics, AI-enabled robotics, RPA. Uh, interesting, uh, we believe that perhaps it's time to look beyond that and potentially uh, leverage a native facility in the platforms that you're using that allows you to automate a lot of things without having to resort to robotics. That's at least uh, our view. And then finally, uh, when you automate a lot of things, you need to maintain an overview. So you're automating volumes, which means that you need to have a way of monitoring and assessing the business that you do. It could be the type of risk flowing in. So I also always like to use the example of uh, if you are in the motor insurance business and you are online on an aggregator and you have the lowest price for red Ferraris driven by first time 18-year-old young men. So it might be you get all of the business, but it not, might not be the attractive business that you want to have. So you need to be able to instantly monitor that uh, you might not get the risk uh, distribution that you're looking for and then take corrective action. So monitoring your business is quite key. So all of these are uh, important for 
uh, your ability to drive profitable growth. Now, if you have absolutely no plans of engaging in either microinsurance, embedded insurance, or parametric insurance, I still encourage you to run test scenarios if you were able to do it, should you have the, the ambitions to do so. Because these are really difficult businesses to be in. And you need to have the capabilities that we just talked about in order to be able to do it. So if you run this as a test scenario, as a way of stress testing, testing your existing setup, and you realize that, you, that you, you, you're considering, could we be able to do it if we wanted to, and you realize that perhaps we don't really have the, the platform set up, the system set up, to be able to, in a profitable way, offer embedded insurance products, or micro-insurance products, or parametric insurance products, maybe that should uh, inspire you to consider if you are, are having a setup that is efficient enough to actually uh, run your existing business, or there might be opportunities for you to make improvements to your existing business in order to improve your profitability and, and, uh, and, uh, and set yourself up for profitable growth. So uh, the last thought I will leave you with is uh, at, at my final thoughts on innovation in the insurance industry. And again, coming back to my initial comments about disruption and innovation leading to disruption and so on. And perhaps we haven't really figured it out yet what is it really that we need to do from an innovation point of view in order to achieve growth or even disruption. So uh, one of the sources that I always turn to for further inspiration is McKinsey. Obviously, McKinsey is, is knowledge sponsor of DIA. So there's uh, sources of, of insight available at McKinsey. And I came across this, uh, this report that talks about five steps to improve innovation in the insurance industry. And obviously, there's no shortage of uh, information if you will, on the internet of how to innovate and how to innovate in the insurance industry. And I'll leave it to you to figure out what works for you or not. But I found this particular report particularly interesting, and it talks about how to apply an outside accelerator to your innovation setup in order to achieve further innovation. So obviously, and I'll, I'll leave it to, to discuss uh, to, to in your own time to, to read the report, but it discussed various types of, of innovation, uh, less or more, but it, it applies this idea of an accelerator, as you see in the, the dark blue uh, area in the middle, as a way of accelerating innovation and facilitating innovation. And my final thoughts and my final uh, uh, presentation to you will be that we have an accelerator. We have something that is extremely useful to accelerate because it allows you to do a lot of the things that Nigel just showed you in a way of automating a lot of things, but also is really efficient by using configuration, low or no code, that allows you to get something real done, something tangible that can be used as a pilot, as a minimal viable product, or even a, a full go-to-market product, uh, and it allows you to test out a few things. For instance, your ability to offer embedded insurance or micro-insurance or parametric insurance. So obviously, we don't have uh, much more time than this, so I'll, I'll invite you all to visit us at our booth in the exhibition area. As Nigel said, there is a chance to win one of these uh, super cool IBA water bottles uh, by participating in our competition. Uh, all you have to do is leave us your telephone number because we'll send you an SMS that will determine if you win the, the water bottle or not. And we'll talk a bit about how we have uh, used IB Suite and the configuration facilities of IB Suite to, to do that. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for coming today, and I hope to see you in our exhibition area a bit later. Thank you.